Today we are going to one of the coolest car museums in the US, probably the whole wide wild world. And uh, it's called Peterson Automotive Museum here in Los Angeles. It was reopened just a couple of days ago. And what I am the most excited about is their exhibition of electric vehicles. EV stocks are so hot right now and I often talk about those companies in my videos. So I'm pretty intrigued to see firsthand what all the hype is about and if any of them is going to blow my mind. Also, our son loves cars. Sorry, did I say love? He's obsessed with cars a lot more than my wife and I are combined. So, it looks like we're going to have a blast of a day. Avi, are you excited? Yeah! <laughs> my fam at the museum and now I'm going to find a parking spot excuse me a free parking spot as you see tickets to the museum for a two-hour visit are um, $16 for an adult and 11 for a kid and parking costs $17 so basically 17 bucks for two hours not that good of a deal and uh, yeah, let me cut away and show you what I am going to do with those $17 instead. Bye. The first thing worth mentioning about the museum is of course its unique red and silver facade. It looks like a spaceship landed in the middle of a random street. Very cool. Inside of Peterson Museum... Sorry, is that Peterson or Patterson? Uh, Peterson. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Inside of Peterson Museum, there are three levels with different car exhibits. There is also a basement known as the vault with about 250 cars. But since they don't allow children under 10, and I don't care that much about cars myself, we'll probably pay a visit in like 6 years or so. The three levels, though, are more than enough for a very lovely walk. There are old cars, there are concept cars, supercars, F1, hot rods, and cars from movies like Blade Runner and Minority Report, which turn out to be my most favorite exhibition of all. And of course, there are electric vehicles, which I was so excited to see. Unfortunately, they didn't have that many EVs. They didn't have a Cybertruck, which had been on display right before the lockdown. They didn't have Fisker Ocean either. Maybe Lucid? No. Neo? Neo. Basically, the companies that I'm invested in were not represented at the museum. What did they have then? Well, let me show you. So this is ID3. Volkswagen. It looks nice, compact, very European. Uh, reminds me of golf, but I'm pretty sure Europeans would love it. And here we have Karma Rivero, which is pretty much a redesigned Fisker Karma, originally produced by Henrik Fisker's first EV company, which was the main competitor to Tesla in early days, but quite famously went BK and now is more of a zombie company owned by the Chinese money. Their headquarters are located here in Irvine, so I see them rather often. Pretty cool cars for 150k. Ouch. On this particular one, I absolutely love the paint. Very deep, metallic, but definitely not a fan of this poop brown color. And those handles for baby hands. Why? Next, we have a Bollinger SUV. Honestly, when I first saw a promo for it, I thought they were bringing back an old Land Rover or something. It looked so square and basic, as if it didn't even have a design. But in person, this off-roader is oddly appealing. Maybe not for 125k, but hey, at least it has this dope see-through compartment. Nice. 
and then solo by electromechanica Whew. every time i see this three-wheeler all i can think of is that they could design anything and chose to create something that looks like a salvaged early 2000s generic european car cut in half but if it still leaves doubts no i'm not invested in that I have read comments praising the design and saying that they would love to get one. I don't know if those were not just the stock pump and jumpers. Whatever. I, I guess as the Russians say, but personally, I try to avoid putting my limited resources behind something that a large group of motorists would be ashamed to be seen getting into. I'm sorry, Han Solo, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but for 18k, I'll pass. And for all of those who strongly disagree, go treat yourself. Next, a truly mind-boggling concept spaceship by Faraday Future called Zero One. I mean, it doesn't even look like a car, and with that non-existent clearance, it definitely should levitate over a cyber racetrack or something. People seem to be very impressed and wowed by it and paid attention to it for a lot longer than most of the cars in the museum. Faraday Future is a troubled company. They have interesting ideas, but unfortunately, so far it's mostly talk and talk is not cheap when it comes to EVs. We'll see. Besides those few, there were just a few more electric vehicles, but of course, of course, my camera for some unknown reason was missing those files. Nothing to be sorry about, to be honest, just a few oddly looking EV experiments from the past and two Teslas, a prototype of Model S in red, which I think I like more than the current version, and an old roadster in dark green which looked like black but it was actually green super cool i think meet kevin got his used one in red for like 70k if i remember it correctly so it seems like people hold on to them and enjoy those little cars and we are out thank you peterson such a lovely museum. We'll be back. <laughs>